Connor Orr, Sports, Sports Illustrated, Monday morning quarterback here on Big Board Sports, MMQB.com. And, Connor, thanks for a few minutes here in Albany on ESPN Radio. Roger Weiland and uh, Chris Honorado, nice to have you with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. No problem, Connor. And I read your, I read your column, and, uh, yeah, I, I, guess, I guess a lot of people are still trying to figure out who the heck Ben McAdoo is from the picture you painted when he was in Green Bay as an assistant and a coordinator, and now to, to him as a, a head coach with the Giants. Everyone's still trying to figure that out, aren't they? Yeah, and, you know, I think what the reporting kind of bears out is it's, you know, it's still a young guy, relatively young coach, still trying to find his way. I mean, you know, you can be a very different kind of coach uh, when you only have five or ten guys that you're responsible for. And I think he's trying to figure out a way to tailor that approach uh, for 53 guys. And, you know, you've seen since the stories run, actually, you know, a couple little changes um, that he's actually made to, to try to make that better. All right, how was he in Green Bay? Why don't we start there? Because then you can get into how he has been with the Giants, and we know he's been difficult in a lot of areas, including the media. But how was he as an assistant, as a coordinator with the Packers? Really, I mean, he was the shoulder to lean on. I mean, he was a guy, and this is really kind of unprecedented for a lot of position coaches, but a coach that would even reach out to um, you know, people outside the facility to see if there was anything going on with his players emotionally, if there was a way that he could teach them that made a little bit more sense to them. And, you know, when you get to New York, you know, I think one of the things that he's realized is you can't do that when you have, you know, 60 players that you're responsible for. But over the last few weeks, he started pushed, uh, you know, pulling guys aside. He's been having one-on-one conversations with a lot of his players in an effort to kind of recreate some of the stuff that he's done best. If you're a Giants fan or if you're just kind of an onlooker of, of the Giants and what's been going on with Big Blue this season, it's a great piece that Connor wrote on the head coach. Uh, because, Connor, I think in a lot of ways it it humanizes Ben McAdoo. We don't get a lot of, of emotion from him or a lot of personality from him in just a press conference type setting that we see. And so the story's back to Green Bay in a lot of ways I think humanizes him in a way that, that we don't otherwise know. Were you aware of, of kind of the, the person he was in Green Bay and the transition he's trying to make now? No, and I think that was initially by design. I think that Ben really wanted to keep you know, what was in the past, in the past, his personal life, um, you know, away from the job. But when you start talking to people, you know, it's like, you know, hey, this is a guy that goes home and still checks his kids' math homework every night. I mean, this is a guy who, you know, really is a, a caring, personable guy. And I think that, you know, because you're in New York and because things tend to spiral out of control, uh, a perception can form around you. And so, you know, I think it's interesting. He's kind of chosen to to not let that side of him out into the media. But, uh, you know, I think that that's something that could be able to help him in the future. Yeah, and you also wrote, too, you know, he comes to New York and in the first press conference he got a suit on that's three times too big and, <laughs> and his hair looks a little bit different. And then all of a sudden now you see him, he's got, he's got the tailor-made suits going on and he's got this slick back Pat Riley haircut look going on. So all of a sudden he's kind of changed his personality. And you know what else, Connor? Even talking with other members of the media and colleagues like Paul Schwartz and Pat Leonard of yours that you know what everyone was called in beat writers were called in and said hey we're gonna have a great relationship here and and i'm gonna give you guys off the record stuff and, and it's all gonna be great i think everyone left there going wow gonna be a great guy to cover great team to cover and then and then connor everything changed <laughs> yeah um you know i think you know uh I, that happens everywhere you know to be honest i mean you know every when i was a beat writer Every new team that you covered, you know, that happens. That's the initial promise because as long as you start on the right foot, these guys think that they're going to rattle off 10 wins in a row and then they're not going to need anybody anyway. <laughs> you know? So that's, uh, that's kind of how it works. But, uh, you know, I, I will say that uh, he's a different, definitely a different coach than Coughlin, but he reminds me of Coughlin in that everybody's kind of on the same level with him. He doesn't really treat anybody differently in the media and – some people like that. I like that about Coughlin because he always kind of knew where he stood, but there are certainly some people who don't like that as well. Connor Orr with us here on Big Board Sports 104.5, the team ESPN Radio. The link to the McAdoo piece uh, you can find on Connor's Twitter handle, at Connor Orr, very simple, one N in Connor, uh, and, of course, on SI.com. Connor, what is the, the sense you get that it all may not 
have already been lost for Ben McAdoo, that he can still save his job in New York? I think he can just because, you know, it's two wins this season, but, you know, really oddly timed. I mean, the Denver Broncos team, I think, was coming off a of buy, or if not, it was close to around then. Um, and they had a winning record at the time, uh, still the third best defense in the league. And then all of a sudden, the Kansas City Chiefs coming off a of buy. Andy Reid never loses coming off a of buy. Um, and so it was kind of like a stunning win. And so I think that if he somehow manages to string together, two or three more wins down the stretch here, I think he's going to be fine for next year. And I know that that's not what Giants fans probably want to hear. A lot of them had him fired in the second week of September. But at the same time, I think you have to give people a little bit of room to make some mistakes and figure out what works for them. I I would have fired him after the loss to the 49ers. (laughs) I'm sure a lot of people would have agreed with you, yeah. (laughs) He was he was he was into my office and gone Monday morning. <laughs> Pack your bags, you and Jerry, and and hit the road, and we'll we'll find somebody better. But but now you're right. They they beat Kansas City. Now look, this is all predicated him keeping his job. That he does have to win a few more games. I mean, he can't lose the rest of these games or only win one more. I mean, he's got to string some wins together here, doesn't he? Yeah, and you know what? This isn't going to be an easy end of the season. I mean. You know, you're starting off, You that's a hard-fought defensive overtime game against the Chiefs and then a short turnaround, um, you know, against a, you know, a, a Washington team that I think is a lot better than people are giving them credit for um, on Thanksgiving. And then just a lot of explosive teams down the stretch. I mean, the Oakland Raiders haven't been playing up to their capability, but I think certainly uh, towards that secondary, the Eagles you have still coming to town. Another game against Washington to close up the season, so... Uh, I don't think that that's necessarily uh, going to be easy for him. But then again, he needs to show them that he's good enough to earn it. Hey, Connor, you, you mentioned your days as, as a beat reporter covering this Giants team for the Star-Ledger before going to the NFL.com and then now, now obviously with SI. Um, and so I'm curious as to your thoughts on Eli Manning's future with this franchise because you know the Giants as, as well as anybody. And even with their general manager scouting guys like Josh Rosen and, and Sam Darnold, could you see the Giants keeping Eli around as a groomer, or do you think they'd be the type that, that would just want to kind of, hey, clean break, let's move on and, and turn it over to a young guy? No, I think they definitely want him around as a groomer. I mean, if you looked at when they drafted Eli Manning, it was very important for them to have someone like Kurt Warner in the building um, to sort of set the stage for him. And, you know, maybe that only took six or seven games in their mind before Manning was ready to play, but... Um, I, I definitely think that they're not going to just, you know, cut bait after the season. I still think even, you know, Eli is basically the definition of replacement level quarterback this year based on his play, but that's better than half the teams in the league have right now. And I think that that's something that they're well aware of. And if they can get Odell Beckham back, I think that elevates Eli's play to the point where he's still better than maybe, you know, 15 quarterbacks in the league right now. Connor Orr, we appreciate a few minutes. Uh, MMQB.com. Read the column that uh, that Connor wrote on Ben McAdoo. Well done, and thanks for a few minutes here in Albany. All right, thanks, guys. I appreciate it.